Okay, next one. Let's we have this. So I'm gonna end this with this. So um, I I did promise earlier on or in another podcast that I was gonna stop talking about the whole Brian Callum, Brendan Shaw, Chris Alia thing because I did feel a bit yucky about kind of exploiting this situation. It, that's what it felt like to me. Of course, you know, some I got some good comments back from a lot of the people saying that oh they kind of appreciated my commentary and I was fairly um you know unbiased when it came to my uh, you know viewpoint on how these guys are dealing with it and obviously trying to pull out some lessons that can be applied to our daily lives, which I don't think they can, but there is a lot of, to be learned from some of this sort of like cancellations that have happened in the LA comedy scene that can be applied to our daily lives, whether you are uh, a person of notoriety or not. I think there are lessons to be learned of how we kind of, especially as men, how we sort of conduct ourselves with women in, especially in the nightlife scene, especially for myself coming from the dance music scene, lines can be blurred when you're out, you know, high, drunk, whatever it may be. You can sometimes get yourself in situations that you don't necessarily intend to. You can sometimes say things in a way that you wouldn't say if you're sober, but there is needs to be an, an, a kind of an acknowledgement of that and also an acknowledgement of your responsibility in that because I think there is a lot of an abject, there's a lot of kind of, um, refusal to take responsibility in some of these instances of like the position these guys have put themselves in there's more so about no everyone's coming after me what was me when really there are kind of like two people at fault in this occasion of course the women involved and of course the men involved but in this current political climate we're in at the moment uh, you know political correctness has gone overboard where essentially there's always a hero and a villain and unfortunately also in these public cancellations issues whenever someone does one bad thing or a series of bad things you have to completely denigrate or kind of you know erase the entirety of the good that they've done prior and i'm not willing to do that because i just don't think that's fair i do think redemption exists i do believe in forgiveness and i do believe in people kind of you know um rewriting their wrongs because i know i've made loads of mistakes in my life so for me to kind of sit there on my ivory uh tower and kind of point fingers and say you know you did that wrong and your counsel is not whatever is really really disingenuous and not something that i'm ever going to support so with that being said i thought it would be a good time to maybe catch up on what brian's basically said regarding some of the pushback he's gotten from a lot of the people on the community a lot of people that were fans who have essentially been you know and i've said it myself had a lot to say about brian's conduct when it came to crystalia's allegations right crystalia was the first person to get cancelled out of that sort of la comedy scene circle and the reaction towards crystalia basically um outlined a lot of was representative of a lot of the reaction towards Brian Kellen. Because I think, I still believe, if Brian Kellen and Brenda Shaw would have dealt the, with the Crystal Lear incident um, in a far more fair, um, less uh, risk, not risk averse, I'd say. If they dealt with the situation as a real friend should do, they would be in a far better position now going through what they're going through now. I definitely believe that, especially in Brian's case, because he's the one that got cancelled. You know, he got some very serious allegations against him, probably more serious than what um, Chris went through regarding, again, you know, uh, two ends of the wrong, no, two two ends of the wrong stick. But regardless, I do think in terms of severity, Brian's Callan's allegations are wild, especially when you've been accused of rape. It's insane. But I think if Brian Callan would have dealt with the Crystal Lee situation better, we would have been, he would have been in a far better position. But, you know, that's that's something to be said on that one. So Brian Callan decided to get on his podcast, The Conspiracy Social Club, or is that what it's called now? I'm pretty sure, with Sam Tripoli, and essentially explain some of his actions and, you know, basically rewrite the narrative that's going out in there that he essentially deleted all the pictures of Chris Allen and his social media to save himself. And then, as Karma would have it, social, the cancellation um, brigade came after him and he essentially got cancelled worse than what Chris Talia did in the situation. So this is Brian Cannon explaining what happened and giving his point of view. And again, I'll go through it. I'll run, let it run some time because I've got some fever regarding it. I'll stop it too often. I'll let him say his piece and I'll give my opinion as we continue with the video. But let's uh, go on with this. Uh, I think last podcast, and this is for all you fucking guys out there who um, I think I said I'd only hung out with Chris once and went out to dinner once or something like that. Let me clear this up right now. Chris is my friend. I've always been in touch with Chris through all this whole time that he's had his ordeal. And when I say I didn't hang out with Chris, I'm saying I didn't hang out with him because the times I saw him were at the comedy store. Our relationship was comedy store and... Uh, and when we were it's work, right? It was, I, it was always work. Uh, the truth is, when you're way older than somebody, you don't go to lunch or dinner fucking ever. 
Now, the weird thing about this is that I don't think he owes anyone an explanation, right? I think as fans, and I'm a fan of the show, a fan of his still, even though I don't agree with some of his actions, I don't think he owes any of us an explanation. He could do whatever the fuck he wants. It's his life. He's a grown man. He's look after his family and his kids. It is what it is. But I think the issue here for most, and again, speaking for myself, is that when the Crystal Lee allegations came out, they were pretty heavy, as all allegations are. But from what I've seen so far, especially when somebody's going through a really public cancellation, as a friend, the best thing that you can do publicly and privately is support them until more of the facts have come out, until you've basically spoken to your friend and made your own assertion as to where you fall, um, as to where what, what side of the line that you fall in terms of agreeing what they did and not agreeing what they did, well, regardless, right? But I think what you can do, the best thing that you can do, especially when the council mob comes after them, is just support them publicly and privately. Un, you know, unfriending them on social media, deleting pictures, um, basically rewrite, trying to rewrite the narrative as to how close you actually were, will always come across really yucky. It really will come across back, uh, back, uh, you know, backstabby. It really will come across snaky. It's always going to come across like that, regardless of your intentions. Like if you could, like, let's say a scenario where someone, you know, Chris Lee got cancelled, but then throughout the entire process behind the scene, Brian was talking to him every day, as you say. Let's say that's the truth. It doesn't matter. The optics of it look bad because you've deleted all these pictures. When you got on camera straight away, you started crying, which is, you know, for me, a, a real indication of like, you know, you are more conscious about something else happening to you, right? That reaction between Brian and Cal Brian Callan and Brendan Shaw was super bizarre. Crying like that because your friend got cancelled, you know, especially when you consider the allegations was really insane. Um, you should be worried for your friend, you want to look out for him, but crying on camera, especially before they even spoke to the guy personally, was nuts. And then getting on there and basically trying to tell your audience, hey, don't tr don't come after us with your pitchforks. We didn't know the guy too tough. He's just a comedic friend. Was really disingenuous because as fans, as guess especially, we've watched hundreds of hours of these guys on on podcasts, hundreds of hours, and they purposely lent into this idea that they were friends. Number one. Right, they basically, they basically personally lent into this idea that there was this rat pack of comedic friends that were going on road, that were going on the road, hanging out at the comedy store, doing all silly goosey stuff and having a whale of a time. Now, if that wasn't true, fair enough. But you then can't complain that the fans have that point of view because that is what you presented. You leaned into it because it served you at that time. It allowed you to kind of book more shows, increase your social media presence when you had each other on each other's podcasts. That's essentially what you played up into. So when fans make that assertion that, hey, you guys were actually closer than you guys make out, it's because you provided that information. You're the one that presented it to them. And there's, again, I could go up and bring up examples and clips of loads of occasions where Brian Cannon and Chris, Chris Lee have been hanging out socially, which kind of, you know, really goes and goes against everything he's saying here and basically proves that, you know, Brian Cannon might be lying or maybe uh, twisting the truth to fit his narrative. But that isn't the, the case here. The case is more so this kind of reluctance and um, inability to understand where others are coming at it, right, in terms of the fans. And this kind of persistence need in his, from what I've seen so far with Brian, where he's really desperate to make sure that everybody knows that him and Chris Alia weren't really friends. When if you look at it really, he has the more poignant problem at the he has to face. He has to convince people that he didn't rape somebody. He has to convince somebody that he didn't expose themselves against against someone's wishes that are flipping urban outfitters right? i mean that's what he has to really spend his time focusing on and it seems to me that he somehow believes through his actions that if he spends enough time denigrating crystal lee that it's somehow going to exonerate him that's not going to happen unfortunately cancer culture when it comes for you it comes for you um until he's kind of proved innocent in the court of law or the women retracted their statements he's always going to be guilty in the court of public opinion and even more so now that he's coming out and purposely trying to distance himself from his friend who's also going through a bit of an issue. So that's what, that's basically where I come at. So that's why I still believe he'd be in a far better position if he just would have just backed Chris and said, hey, I don't believe this story to be true. He's my best friend. I'm going to be there for him. And then when the story of him would have come out, there would have been a little bit more of a collective support system around him. A little bit more sympathy would have been extended to his position. But in, what he's saying now just kind of smacks of somebody trying to save their own bacon. And considering what he's gone through, considering what his friend has gone through, it's just a bit disappointing to see that as a fan. Again, he doesn't owe anybody an explanation, but just as a fan, it's just disappointing to see. The times I saw him when I wasn't at the comedy store was never saw him on the road. Never saw him on the road. That's the times I saw him were at Swingers four or five times maybe when he would go after shows at 11 o'clock
and the road thing is definitely not true because there's loads of videos of them you know of course they're rehearsed and they're probably uh staged but loads of occasions where brian cannon is kind of crashing crystalia's show right and they do it to each other and they kind of get on show and get on the uh, on the stage and essentially rip each other to pieces like they do on the podcast extended the kind of narrative uh, okay, i don't know and I would go have some pancakes. No, I didn't. I didn't need pancakes, you fuck. I'd have one usually. <laughs> but the point is, uh, with, with him in a group. So so what I'm trying to say is I'm not distancing myself from Chris. I'm not saying I didn't. You love out. Chris. I Chris love is Chris. Your friend. He's my friend. Chris is going through what he's going through. Um, and, and by the way, initially, when it all started, I said, I've never seen Chris do anything illegal. I stand by that. Chris has never done anything illegal that I've never seen. And I don't believe he has ever done. And I stand by that. So that's the other thing. But mainly when you guys are saying, I don't know what the implication was where I said, I, I, I went to dinner, I went out to dinner with him once in, in 10 years or something like that. What I mean is we didn't hang out socially. I think I actually... I want, we were talking about doing a show one time and I went to, uh, I went to lunch with him and you know, what's funny about Chris, if you hang. And again, why is this important to even say, this is the thing that's the issue here. Let's say that it's, it's what he's saying is true. At that moment in time, your friend needs your support. Your friend needs your backing publicly and privately. We know how important, again, it shouldn't be, but we know how important it is in the entertainment world for you to be publicly showing support. You see what's happening to Chris Pratt at the moment now, right? All these Hollywood friends are coming around and banding around him and trying to make sure, you know, that he kind of keeps his jobs and shit because I guess he's got a good reputation amongst his peers. We know how important that is to people when they're going through their thing. We see how much, how grateful Ellen DeGeneres was when Kevin Hart publicly went out and did that staged luncheon with her, kind of, kind of, you know, supporting in public and saying hey this woman's my friend i don't care what the people are saying about her i'm always going to have her back we know how important it is so for him to purposely go out there especially when the news was fresh a couple of hours that story got published in the la times go on camera distance himself from his friend was unnecessary no one needs to know that information no one needs to know the extent of how much they hanged out it just needed a brief statement if anything no statement that's why sometimes i respect immensely joe rogan's a position of never commenting on his friends when they get into some sort of public scandal. He never comments on it because he doesn't want to add any more fuel to the fire. They're already going through what they're going through. He has a large platform. The last thing they need is for his friend, who might end up saying more, you know, getting them in more trouble because, you know, you're their friend, so you're going to go and ride out for them. There's no need to do that. I'd rather be quiet, let the process run its course, and then when you're ready, come on my show so you can go and pick up your career. That's what a real friend would do, right? And there should be just a sense of loyalty. I don't know. For me personally, I've always said, like, Unless my friend, the only thing I think I would write off my friends completely for and I'd have no way to coming back would be rape and touching up kids. Those are the two things that, you know, there'd be no, there'd be no coming back from that for me as a friend. But other allegations, whether it's to do with, you know, something sexually inappropriate with a co-worker, I'd want to hear my friend out and get that side of the story first before I make up my decision. I'm not just going to go off the back of what I've heard because I owe them that. They've been my friend for five or six years. Didn't there isn't there isn't there an example of Quentin Tarantino, right? Who um had um who's put in a really unfortunate position where he had to defend his friendship with with flipping Harvey Weinstein, Harvey Weinstein, right? When he was going through what he was going through, and he's been proven to be an absolute monster, right? He's in prison for raping and sexually assaulting many, many, many people, famous or not famous. And they asked Quentin Tarantino during that time, "Hey, what do you think of these allegations against um, Harvey Weinstein?" And guess what Quentin Tarantino said? He's my friend. I'm not going to make any comment right now because this guy again, Quentin Harvey, and if it Lionsgate, they were instrumental in Quentin Tarantino's success, right? Directorial success. They gave him the platform, provided him with the funds to do what he needed to be done. And even he said, in defense of Harvey, "Hey, I'm not going to say anything now until there's more, you know, information comes out." But he's my friend, and he's got my support for the time being. Right, because it's no you're gonna wait for one to come out, and that's Harvey Weinstein. These guys couldn't even defend Crystalia. Imagine, so him saying all this stuff is just weird. Like it's just again, it's unnecessary, and it it's probably more a, a a symptom of being in Hollywood. He just he's like you know you've worked so hard to get a career. He's finally had some level of success. He's been toiling in obscurity for what two, three decades, four decades right like he never wanted to be a stand-up he just happened to be good at it right from what you read between lines especially with him talking to joe rogan he was just naturally gifted at being a stand-up comic but his real desire was always to be a working hollywood actor 
comedic or not, that's where he really wanted to earn his bacon. And it never really worked out for him until the success of The Fire and the Kid, which he naturally didn't actually give a shit about if you, if you listen to what Brendan Schaub said. So it's ironic that the one thing he didn't care about is the one thing that's now kind of supporting and maintaining him and providing him some kind of leverage and platform to basically do what he's doing at the moment. But this is the issue. But again, let's continue. Hang with him, which I didn't realize. Guess what he does? He just hangs out all day. He's one of those guys who can hang out and drink coffee all fucking day. Yeah, he's one of those guys. You're like, fuck, man, it's been a long hangout. Yeah, <laughs> and then we had a meeting one time, and then he uh, yeah. after the meeting, he went and was Why just kind of scrolling around a clothing store, and I was like, this? you just hang out, huh, dude, <laughs> and do nothing? That's not me. He doesn't listen to music, which is kind of the weirdest thing about Chris. Of all this stuff that's come out, which I don't believe any of it, uh. but the one thing I do believe the dude doesn't listen to music. He's he's that's on, a weird he's a thing. bit on the spectrum. He is on the yeah. spectrum. Yeah, so listen, anyway, man, so I, me, I just something. want to put that fucking to rest. Is that I have never there a lot of people are talking to me scrubbing my Instagram. Let me let me talk to you about this too, just so we can put this fucking thing to bed too. The reason that I took down those videos was when all the shit down went down with Chris, my friends were there, and the comments underneath we're, we're so crazy that that my friend said, "Look, your daughter is in middle school. She's going to read this shit." What? Again, man. Look, he does all this explanation. Is what it is. Again, I love the guys. It's the issue. I actually like him. He's my favorite. Like, legitimately, my favorite of all that comedy crew. Right? He's naturally incredibly funny on podcasts. His banter uh, with Chris Alia is legendary. 10 minute podcast will go down in the podcasting hall of fame, right? Brian Callen is, in my opinion, top five stand ups in that scene, not worldwide, but in that kind of LA comedy scene, even though he has a, you know, a particular sort of, you know, physical comedy that people can sometimes people love or hate. But I actually love the dude. I actually really do love. It. So to see him do this kind of, you know, um, semantic gymnastics is super annoying. Why is he mentioning his kid when it comes to scrubbing his pictures? Now, again, let's put it out there in the front. Optics wise, it looks really bad. His friend got accused of something. He didn't call him to find out what was going on. Immediately turned on the camera to talk about it in order, what, to gain more views and to maybe kind of be the first to comment on it in public. Started crying on camera and then decided to then tell us and inform the audience has how far or the extent of their relationship. Made it known that they didn't hang out, to, that didn't hang out together that much. Made it known that they weren't that close friends. Made it known that they never went on tour. In a moment of, you know, of this guy's essentially career coming, crashing down all up around him, really serious allegations out there. And also maybe in the knowledge too that there was another story coming out about him in the back of his head, he decided to get in front of it and push his friend under the bus in order to kind of preserve his own self. And then the cancel culture came after him. In that moment, he decided to then go through his entire Instagram and scrub it. And if you remember when that happened, when the podcast, I think maybe a couple of podcasts later, or maybe it might have been on this one, or maybe it might have been on the fire and the kid, Brian Callen said something along the lines of, I didn't do that, my agents did. Which again, at the time I didn't believe, I thought it was a complete lie, right? But let's imagine that's true. Let's say, oh, your friend's getting cancelled. He's presented, he at the time was represented by CAA or WME, one of them big agencies. I can see his agency doing that if he's giving them control. He's not the most technologically savvy person. I can understand that maybe he gives the social media reins to somebody to help him out with, social media system, whatever it may be. And they basically said, hey, it might be beneficial if you scrub your, your Instagram or his pictures of him. But usually, that's usually a personal decision. Somebody to do that, decide to go through that. And if, and if he's saying what he's saying is true, that, oh, the comments are really vicious, just delete the comments. Turn off your comments on your Instagram page or make so that only verified commenters can comment on your page. Whatever you can do, you can delete your pictures underneath your post, but to go through and delete the, delete the pictures of your friend, date Im images dating back to years and years and years, and then use your daughter as a shield and say that, oh, it's because I didn't want my daughter to see his messages is nuts. Delete the pictures anyway. You've got how many... How many pictures of himself did he have on his own Instagram where there was vicious comments on there regardless, right? Especially because of his relationship with Brendan Shaw because people hate Brendan. He didn't delete those, did he? He kept those pictures up. So this excuse about it was impacting his daughter is absolute BS. And again, it goes to show just how far his star has fallen, isn't it? And the lengths at which he's scrambling to save his Hollywood career, even though, in my opinion, his career is over in Hollywood. It's done for. The quicker he accepts that, the sooner he can move on, the sooner he can actually be a support system to his actual friends that are going through whatever he's going through because the, the council mob comes after you in a way that it's come after Brian Callen. There's no going back. 
there's no scenario that I see where he's going to be represented by one of these big agencies and is going to be allowed on one of these big shows. The moment he gets booked on any show, the moment he gets booked on any TV series, the moment he gets booked on any movie, the council member is going to come after and attack him the same way they did in these stand-up gigs where they tried to, where they got successfully got some venues to cancel his stand-up that he was doing, which essentially cost him money, I'm assuming, right? That's going to continue. No one's ever going to forget this especially the council mob so you owe it to yourself to just support your friend because you're never going to win those people back because they're the gatekeepers of hollywood so this thing that he's doing now where he's making up excuses for his actions is just odd it's really really odd and again it's just optics isn't it at the time deleting your pictures of your friend when they're going through such a moment in need it just screams of you trying to save your own bacon and again the irony is not lost on me you did all that and you still got cancel yourself anyway take it down. So what I did is I called Marty, my buddy, I go, hey, Marty, take all those videos down because this ain't helpful. This is not helpful to Chris. Who would I call? It's not helpful to you to have the images of him. Well, it's not helpful to Chris for what's that going to do? Because he has images of Chris on his platform. What, they were going to just include them in articles anyway. It's no, you can find those pictures all over Google. It's not as if like he scrubbed it and there's no images of him and Chris and Delia hanging out anymore. They exist. They're on the internet. They, they, they can never be erased. After that, I said to Chris, hey, dude, just so you know, I took down all these videos. That's what I did. I didn't do that because I was trying to distance myself from fucking Chris. Yeah. I did it because the comments and the fucking insanity is yeah. so bad. But again, this is the problem, Brian. You don't understand how it looked. It does look like that. You can have all the good intentions in the world, but if it looks one way to most people, then that is just the way it looks. You have to be understanding of that. That is just the thing. Um, and I think widely, again, if they can pull, because I'll stop this, I won't play the whole thing. You can watch it yourself because I'm tired of talking about this. But widely, I think the lesson to be learned from this is like support and back your friends, man. Like always have your friends back to a certain extent. But you owe it to your friends to speak to them directly when you hear them going through, when, when they're accused of something very, very egregious or they're going through a very situ situ serious situation, you owe it to your friends to speak to them directly, not to just go by the hearsay of what you see on social media. Now, if they're not your close friends, then of course, fuck them. Listen to what everyone else is saying on social. But if they're your actual friend and you actually love them and you care about their well-being, you owe it to them. The cost of friendship is to call them directly and say, hey, what's going on? What's up with A, B, and C, or D? And then you decide to make your own decision based upon that. But to just throw your friend under the bus to save your own career, which is completely fleeting. And again, it's, this exposes people's m most of their um, actual, exposes their actual real intention, which is just to be famous and successful. Because I think if you're a level of comedian that Brian Callan is, you don't really need Hollywood, right? You can have a pretty successful career working in podcasting, doing your stand up, doing your own independent stuff to a very successful degree. But it does expose that mostly. He was mostly in it for the, you know, the allure and for the image and for the label of being a working actor in Hollywood. That's what he was actually in it for. The comedic bonus on top of it of being a touring comic and being well regarded within stand up peers and having a loyal fan base and including podcasting, that was just a t icing on the cake. But what he actually wanted was to be an actual working Hollywood actor. And now that's been taken away from him, especially just when he got it, which I have seen before. I think if you just got your show now with the Goldbergs and the spin off, I got, I, I understand. But imagine everything he's been through divorce all this sort of stuff publicly you know the the, the fighting a kid before it before these cancellation was really going downhill he got covid right really you know stressful situations where you'd think you this would be the moment where you'd really need your close friends and family he essentially isolates himself um in that regard due to his reaction regarding everything because you have to imagine too remember when they were going through covid and guests wouldn't come on the fire and the kid because they got covid and now he's going through all this stuff and i'm sure other guests don't want to come on the show because they don't want to have the the smudge of what brian karen's going through too on their name but again unfortunate situation to go through um until there's a really big development on the story i'll stop talking about it like the megan and the tory lane situation it just gets a bit boring after a while but hey that is the final update or that is the latest update regarding the whole brian cannon situation he still doesn't get why people were kind of annoyed at his reaction towards it it is what it is he's doing what he's doing on his podcast on patreon much success to him and all that malarkey but i think the quicker he realizes that his hollywood career is over and the more he focuses on just doing his stand-up and supporting his friends the better the more he keeps you know telling himself that you know deleting the pictures of your friends when they're going through something egregious is the right thing to do the worse and the long this is going to get drawn out especially um the, as more time goes on he starts to get a bit more comfortable for you he can kind of pop his head out the parapet um those cancel mob guys are going to come out with their bows and arrows and start picking him off but hey 
not my life, innit? You ought to make your decisions in it. So I guess he can do what he does. But I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions regarding it. What do you think? Do you believe Brian? Do you think he deleted these pictures because he was afraid his daughter might see um what you call it mean words on the internet about a friend? Or do you think it's just a convenient excuse? I'd love to know your opinion in the comments below.